Hi everybody, this is John Stoll, and this one's called Ghost in the Corner. Let me play the melody first. I'll stop break it all down for you. Uh, this has some mixed meter for the melody, which you'll see in the chart. It has some bars of 6-4 for the opening three bars. So it's moving back and forth between 6-4 and 4-4. I don't uh, consciously uh, go for a mixed meter when I'm composing a melody. The phrases just seem to dictate the meters when that happens. And as I said, I generally uh, make things even even um, a time signature without any mixed meters for the blowing, just for the sake of convenience. So here we go, melody for Ghost in the Corner. Play the melody for you, then I'll break it down for you. Slow swing, tempo about here. One, two, three. <laughs> So there we have the melody for Ghost in the Corner. You may notice a few things in what I played there, some open string voicings, some uh, rhythmic motifs that repeat themselves, in some cases, simple harmony repeated and reharmonized. So let's break the tune down. The initial uh, couple of bars, which are in 6-4, I'm counting those as basically 4 and 2, are chromatic chords going down, alternating uh, two dominants, or I should say two dominant chords chromatically and then two minor chords. And the quality of the different dominant chords varies, as do the minor. So this first one is an A-flat-7, sharp 9, with the open E on top. So this is tonic, major 3rd, flat 7, and sharp 9 on top. Sounds a bit like a minor chord, but that major 3rd is kind of tucked in there, the C natural. So the melody does this, with the open E on top, and then generates the flat 13. And I'm playing, this is Lydian dominant. This is a G7, that has the sharp 11 on top. So tonic, uh, flat 7, major 3rd, sharp 11 on top. So the melody does this. So that E natural could function as a flat 13 in the key of A flat. And then when I change the shape and move down in a half step, it still has a tension over the G7, but now it's the sharp 11. So this is less tension. And we're going to talk a little bit about the different modes of the melodic minor that allow you to access those sounds also when you solo. Now I'm playing the same melody, but I'm continuing down chromatically playing an F sharp minor. This is a very simple minor triad, just five, tonic, minor third, uh, four, actually it's a sus chord because the B would be the, the sus or the, the 11 of the four, and the E is the flat seven, so same melody. And this is a, um, this is also a minor chord. This happens to be, change my neck a little bit so that you can see the angle there. This is an F minor that has the flat 13 on top. So it's the same melody repeated twice with slightly different harmony. Here it is again, A flat seven, with the altered sounds of the, um, the open E. And there's my G7 uh, with the sharp 11 on top, and F sharp minor with the same open E on top. And this is an F minor Aeolian with that flat 13 on top. Now I'm playing an E minor 11. Sorry. This is a pretty simple, straightforward E minor. It's just got the tonic, the 9, flat 7, and the uh, 11 on top. This is an A Lydian major, so I've got the sharp 11 and the 5 together. So this melody is. Then I'm playing a G minor 11. This is flat 7, flat 3, 11 or 4, 9 on top. This is a pretty simple C sharp minor 7 with the, with the B on top. So this phrase is. These are all variations on C sharp minor. I'm adding the, uh, the sharp five or the flat six for this C sharp minor, so it's Aeolian minor. Open B, and then. So those are very 
vibration is on E minor. This could be an E Aeolian minor with a C in it. And this is an F sharp minor with a D. So those are both variations on Aeolian minor chords with a flat six. So that is the first A, which then repeats. So the tune is A, A, B, and a kind of slight variation on the last A. So I'll repeat that melody again for you. A flat seven, G seven, F sharp minor, F minor. Again, the variations are alter dominant, Lydian dominant, Dorian minor, Aeolian minor. This is a, a E Dorian, pretty simple with the, uh, it's a sus chord with the A on top. That's my A Lydian major with both the sharp 11 and the five. Here's my G minor Dorian, it's a sus. C sharp minor, C sharp minor Aeolian, sorry. That last little bit is E Aeolian to F sharp minor, and that repeats. Here's the bridge. This chord is probably the most difficult one to play. If, by the way, you're encountering a chord that feels uncomfortable to stretch in one of my chord melodies or anybody else's, you might think about playing that same voicing higher up on the neck in another key so you could accommodate the stretch, or you could simply grab a portion of a chord and break it down into double stops or something that feels a little less uh, taxing on your hands. So in this case, what I'm playing is a B7. This is gonna resolve to an E minor. So I have basically flat seven and major third on the D and G strings, and my two tensions are on top here. So this is a B7 with a sharp nine and a flat 13 on top, and I've got the uh, flat seven and the major third uh, below it on the D and G strings. So this is an E minor. This is also a bit of a stretch. This is an E minor, basically a minor six. So this is tonic five, flat three, six. You could also just play it like that if you wanted to, but I like having the fifth below it. So this is basically B7 to E minor. Now I'm playing F major to F sharp minor. I used this voicing earlier in the tune, but I'm taking it down a half step. So this is an F minor major flat five, basic F minor triad, C, F, A flat, and then the open B string, which would be my flat five and my E. There's a mode of the harmonic major that gives us that sound. I'll go through that for you a little later when we talk about the blowing. So again, this section is B7 to an E Dorian, then F major, F sharp minor, F minor major flat five, and then a little quick uh, single note passage should take me to a G7. And the last chord is an A major. This is an A major with the third, major seven, five, nine, and five on top. So that's the whole tune in terms of the basic breakdown of the chords. Uh, you may find it difficult to play some of that in time. Again, my purpose in sharing this is more to give you broader applications of some of these chords that you could potentially use in one of your own songs, or to comp for someone else, or perhaps to use some of these changes if you're playing over a standard. Let's talk a little bit about some of the harmony that we can use to solo over the changes using uh, referencing the specific tensions of the chords. So that first change, the so-called altered scale, and by the way, I talk about a lot of this kind of harmonic detail uh, a lot more extensively in some of my True Fire courses, talking about how to improvise over chords using modes of the melodic harmonic minor. So the altered scale is a sound that you've probably heard of or perhaps used in your own playing. This is the seventh mode of the melodic minor, and I think of this as a different key of the melodic minor superimposed over dominant. So the seventh mode would be the equivalent of playing melodic minor chord scales, arpeggios, a half step above a dominant. So in this case, that would be an A melodic minor, a half step above an A flat seven. So there's the voicing I use for the tune. But if I think A melodic minor voicings, meaning minor major seven, and I take an A melodic minor arpeggio, which is A, C, E, G sharp. But I'm thinking of that as an A flat seven. So I have this sound. Again, I'm thinking of an A melodic minor as an A, A flat seven. So if I'm mixing together an A-flat dominant arpeggio, A-flat C, E-flat, G-flat, with an A-melodic minor arpeggio to give me the altered, access to the altered tensions, I'm just kind of executing the arpeggio in a mechanical way so that you can hear the sounds. 
So as we're going down chromatically, the next dominant chord, which would be G, is the fourth mode, which is the equivalent of a melodic minor, a fifth above. So I would play now a D melodic minor, so the basic arpeggio. You can tell that I tend to favor the arpeggios. I just like the wider intervals of those sounds. It gives me the quality of the chord with single lines. A D melodic minor arpeggio would be D, F, A, C sharp. Again, but I'm thinking of that as a G7, so I'll mix together a G dominant arpeggio, G, B, D, F, with a D melodic minor. So the one tension that's giving me is the sharp 11. So if I just want to, in a very mechanical way, execute the two arpeggios or those first two dominant chords down, going down chromatically, I would play an A melodic minor arpeggio over the A flat for the alter, and then a D melodic minor for the G. The next change is the F sharp Dorian, so pretty basic, simple F sharp. Now for the F Aeolian minor, I think of uh, major arpeggios as giving us some of the uh, diatonic minor modes, namely the modes that are, the minor modes that occur in the major scale. So I would think uh, for the um, for the Aeolian, I'm using sharp five major sounds. So in this key, that would be C sharp. Sorry. These are basically F minor chords with the flat six or the sharp five. So I'm going from F sharp Dorian to D flat major as F Aeolian. My next change is E Dorian to A major. That's not really a progression you encounter normally in diatonic harmony. So if I'm seeing anything in either one of my tunes or another modern jazz composition, where the harmony is not obviously diatonic, meaning related to the major scale, cadences like two five ones, I'm just connecting chord tones. So if I see E Dorian, I could potentially go up a whole step to F sharp, which is the relative minor of A major. So I could go from, this is one way to think of maybe connecting E Dorian and A major, but I am essentially thinking E minor, A major there. Again, using basic chord tones. The next little bit of the tune is G Dorian to C sharp, Aeolian. So I would think G Dorian to A flat major, which is the equivalent of the Aeolian minor sound, that flat six that I used earlier over the F minor. So here's the Aeolian minor and F earlier in the piece. And here's the C sharp Aeolian where I'm in the piece now. So again, I'm thinking flat six major or sharp five major to generate Aeolian minor sounds that occur in both of those places in the tune, over the F and over the C sharp. And the next little bit is, um, where are we now? And we're back at the top of the tune. I'm sorry, there's a little bit more, two more Aeolian sounds. So that's E Aeolian to F sharp Aeolian. If I wanted to solo over that, I would think again, sharp five major for both of those. So that would be C and D major. Two. And I do reference those also in the blowing, even though I even the number of uh, beats out, so I'm playing in 4-4 four, four over the soloing, so the chords don't happen quite as quickly on the solos as I'll demonstrate. So we have another A section, which essentially is the same, and then we're moving to the bridge, which has this B7, and that is also referenced in the blowing. So even though that's a bit of a stretch, you wouldn't necessarily play that chord when you're going through the improvised section of the tune. I would just think variations on C melodic minor for B7. That's the half step above. That's the altered scale that I referenced. That's the very first chord of the tune, the A melodic minor over the A flat 7 altered. Now I would think C melodic minor over the B7 altered. These are C melodic minor voicings, but thinking of them as B7. Then a straight E minor, minor 6. So this would be E Dorian. Then F major, F sharp minor. Again, those changes don't occur quite as quickly during the blowing, but I reference them. Then this F minor major flat five, this is an interesting sound. If you think harmonic major, the fourth mode gives you this so-called um, minor major flat five, the sound I just referenced. So if I play a C harmonic major against that F minor, harmonic major arpeggio was one, three, five, flat six. But I'm thinking of that as an F minor. It's a nice sound. So that would be an F minor with both a major 7 and a flat 5 if you play the harmonic major a fifth above. 
So that takes us to, we're almost at the end of the tune, then it's just G major to A major. And again, thinking that G is a dominant chord for the blowing. So I went through that rather quickly, but I think replaying this as many times as you need to to get the references to all the harmonies. You will see in the PDF all the voicings written out. So again, my goal here is just to give you access to some harmonic information that you could apply in another context beyond my tune. So with all that said, let me give you a quick uh, rendition of the melody and a little quick performance over the changes, and um, we'll take it from there. Here we go. Ghost in the corner, melody, short performance. Counting us in in four, but the first three bars are in six. One, two, three. So there's Ghost in the Corner, Breakdown of the Melody and the Solo. I hope this was helpful to you. Looking forward to uh, exploring some other songs of mine with you. Take care. See you soon.